Super star characters. Some of the best characters in all of Genshin Impact. And the last time that I made my tier list on all the four stars in the game was about eight months ago. We've had some new ones. And I gotta say, the meta has changed. Four stars are very important to me personally because every single Abyss cycle, when it changes in Genshin Impact, I 36 star the Abyss with four star characters only holding four star weapons only. So I have used each and every single one of these characters a lot. I know their potentials, I know their strengths, and I can tell you that some of them, a lot of them are even better than a lot of five stars. So let me help you navigate knowing the best four stars in the entire game in my updated tier list. Thank you guys for supporting the content. Thank you for checking out the channel. Let's hop right in. As always with every single tier list, let's talk about the tiers. S plus, game changers best characters in the entire game they affect every team comp that they are involved in in an extremely positive way and are on some of the most meta teams in the entire game they are amazing and i will elaborate on each and every character so you'll know why they're so good s very strong these characters fulfill a certain role whether that's damage whether that is support in an amazing way they're just a little bit weaker than the s pluses because they might not be as versatile they might not be as strong but super 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 good characters and then the a solid to niche i am putting both solid and niche characters into the same tier there are certain characters that only work on certain team comps but they are very strong on those team comps i don't think it's really fair to put them into s or s plus when they only help like one or two characters in the whole game so they're gonna go into the a tier i will explain them so please you know stay tuned for the explanation and then solid maybe they're not gonna be niche but they're gonna be pretty darn decent and then i8 characters they work they're cool you can use them to success you can use every character in genshin to success but they are definitely weaker than their counterparts and then the bra tier homies these characters they're some of the weakest characters in the game, but hey, don't let me stop you. If you love these characters, go out there, build them, have some fun. I say this in every tier list. It's a game where all the characters are different. In games like that, there's gonna be weaker characters. There's gonna be stronger characters, okay? So these characters just aren't that good. So two very important things to note in this video. Now, my last tier list, I ranked every character, if they had a really important constellation, I would rank, you know, C1 Bennett and above versus C0 Bennett. So the tier list got kind of muddy and big. Here's the thing. There are constellations for four stars that make a massive difference, taking them from like bottom tier to top tier, okay? I am going to rank every character at their max potential as if they were C6 or at that constellation that is very important to them. I will explain in every character's you know description that I'm gonna say in this video, what that constellation breakdown is. So if you wanna know about a certain character, you need to listen up because I'm gonna say, for example, Noelle before C6 is somewhere, but I'm gonna put her where she is at C6, okay? Just to keep the tier list looking good. So listen to my explanations, all right? And the final thing, guys, four stars are tough. You cannot guarantee get these four stars and get their constellations off of banners because of how the banner system in Genshin works. So I do not advise pulling for four stars only, okay? You need to balance your 50-50. If you want the five-star character or not, it's tough, it sucks, I know, but they'll come home eventually. Just know you can't guarantee them, but there is the Paimon's Bargain Shop. So when I say a character is free to play or you get one for free, it's either an Abyss reward, like Shangling or Kale, or any of the characters that appear in the Paimon's Bargain's rotating shop. Any player can get them absolutely free to play. So. Just keep those things in mind. Point for four star sex. By the way, if you're wondering about my outfit, it's Christmas Eve and I'm feeling a little bit festive, okay? I don't dress like this every day, <laughs> all right? But this turtleneck's too fresh, come on. First up on the list is La La Lisa. Lisa is a cool character just because Electro has had a massive renaissance ever since Sumeru. But I gotta be honest, Lisa is not the best character i would put her into solid niche for hyper bloom teams she isn't really effective until you have her at c4 and even then she's worse than the better hyper bloom drivers she does shred defense as a character that is something that is rare in Genshin impact but it's not super worth it because you have to get her burst up, which takes so much energy. Okay, she needs a ton of energy recharge. She's clunky to play with her skill. You gotta hold it, hold it there to get the most energy. She's probably gonna be near the bottom of the solid niche characters. That's where she lies right now. She's okay. Out 
Outrider Amber stepping up to the plate. How's Amber faring? You know, 1.0 pyro character. She solves all those puzzles for you. Yeah, guys, it's no secret. Amber is not very good at all. Here's the thing to make Amber viable. You need her at Constellation 6, which is unbelievably hard to get for these day one standard banner characters. Her Constellation 6 actually helps her fulfill a niche as this pyro support. She gives an attack buff to the team. She gives a movement speed buff to the team and she is perfect at proccing Elegy for the end. So you need her Constellation 6 with one certain five-star weapon to be even remotely viable. That is unfair to put her anywhere higher than Bra in my humble, opinion they just didn't make her a very useful kit you can use her you know the amber mains you've seen the clips all right they're crazy out there but dude just a character that doesn't really do much in the grand scheme of things i'm sorry amber we love you next up is a misunderstood character babala ikuyo i think barbara is a really 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 good character right at the beginning of the video i told you guys i clear every single new abyss 36 stars four star characters only with four star weapons only i use barbara almost every single time. This is why Barbara is good. She is a hydro catalyst. That alone makes her a very useful character. All of the best teams in Genshin, dude, I'm talking Hyper Bloom. I'm talking Burgeon, Taser, Vaporize comps, all these comps, freeze comps, they all use Hydro. Okay, so being Hydro makes you pretty darn good. That is not enough to carry her. The fact that she can apply it at any time with her autos, with her charge attack, extremely good. She can be a driver on Hyper Bloom. She, and she even got better because of her healing and Farina. Farina kind of changed the game a little bit, made healing even better. Barbara is extremely versatile. People just think of her as a healer. It's Hydro. The game is about reactions, bro. It's Genshin Impact. This is reaction-based combat. And Barbara makes the reactions really good, dude. Ooh, the only thing annoying about her is the like self-Hydro. But like, and, and she doesn't do very much damage. Let's keep it about, oh my God, Bloom. I forgot about like Bloom teams. Barbara's fire. Yeah, dude. She is at minimum high solid niche. Barbara slaps. I'm going to keep her here, but I generally might move her into the S tier later in the video. All right. Last time I raided both Kaya and Rosaria at the same time. So I'm moving Rosaria up a little bit. Let's do Kaya first. So Kaya is an off field cryo applicator, which is nice. It's cool. It's very useful for freeze comps, or you can even run them on, you know, melt teams, hyper fridge teams. But here's the problem with Kaya. His burst has standard ICDs, okay? I know this is nerd stuff. This is like advanced Genshin gauge theory element stuff. Pretty much what it means is like, you can't melt every single hit of his burst. You either melt every 2.4 seconds or every third proc, and it results in you not getting as much reactions as you'd actually like. On teams like Freeze or Hyper Fridge, like you don't need to apply that much, but when it comes to the damage builds like Melt, which is one of my favorite Rosaria teams, I do think he pales in comparison in that front. When you take that into consideration, he's kind of just a cryo applicator that does pretty good damage, and his melt is just a lot weaker than Rosario. So you can use him in a lot of different teams, the ones I just mentioned, but like, I do think he is just overall weaker than Rosaria by a lot. So let's just start talking about Rosaria. I am throwing her into very strong, no questions asked. Let me explain to you why. Most people think of Rosaria as one of three things, okay? They think of her as a freeze support just to apply more cryo and give, you know, Ayaka some crit rate, okay, or Ganyu. That's cool. Or they think of her as a Eula support, right, at C6, lower the defense, maybe be a cryo battery, give the crit rate, cool. And then there are the heretics out there that try to use Rosaria as a physical DPS. And I gotta say, I don't wanna associate with those people, okay? Something about them rubs me the wrong way, all right? That build is cringe but this is where rosaria is actually insanely good dude reverse melt rosaria her burst unlike kaya it can melt boom 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 every single time you guys gotta go back and see some of my super hype abyss clears with rosaria and shangling absolutely carrying because dude she does so much damage she can put up like 75k melt ticks every single second and that's while shangling's doing a bunch of damage buffed by bennett she's so good she actually does so much freaking damage you guys just you gotta try her this is the build that people don't run on rosaria for some reason because they like their five stars i get it it's circle impact that's cool but she has crazy damage numbers very easy to react and the icd on her burst makes her just kick freaking ass so dude i love rosaria she's a very high damage character she's going into the s tier she's awesome oh my god it's christmas and next up is noel guys Noelle has seen a giant 
renaissance and the reason why is yes it's not a character everybody has but farina changed the game in terms of her hp lowering raising mechanics stealing the team's health and uh boosting up damage a ton so when an archon comes out and really changes the game it changes the landscape of the game just a little bit i'm not going to let these characters get crazy influenced by one other character in the game i do not think that is completely fair but it is something we do need to think about when talking about a character okay so take that for the rest of the video noelle she's awesome at c6 at c0 she's pretty low on the tier list c5 and below i think she's quite low on the tier list she cannot consistently be a on-field damage dealing carry which is where she actually becomes a useful character in my opinion at c6 dude her burst lasts such a long time she does a ton of damage in a large aoe with a shield on and she heals the entire team even without farina dude there are really annoying abyss floors where you do need the healing the corrosion wolves or just enemies that do a lot of damage i mean she's tanky and she heals up the whole team high damage shields and heals works on a ton of different team comps drives lots of on-field reactions because she is a normal attack based character bro c6 noel is actually amazing if y'all don't know c6 noel with farina is literally outpacing ito right now ito's best teams and noel's best team Noelle is legitimately performing better than Ito right now because Ito doesn't work with Farina, okay? He needs Goro, and then you need a healer, and then Farina's kind of a waste. It's like all these characters aren't synergizing very well with Ito. So like you could probably run some jank Farina-Ito team, but Noelle works perfectly on the team, and dude, she is popping off with that. So keep that in mind. Even without Farina, c Noelle is fantastic. Noelle, common W. All right, our little mad scientist is up next. I'm gonna just say right now, it's our first S plus character. Let me break it down for you. Lots of people call Sucrose the mini Kazuha. Okay, Kazuha, go watch my five-star tier list. He's one of the best characters in the entire game. There's something amazing about Sucrose in ways that she is slightly and can be better than Kazuha. But at the end of the day, she's fantastic. Viridescent Venerer, animos are already strong characters alone she can group the enemies with her skill so grouping is an amazing thing that you want all the time her constellation one gives her a second charge of her skill so double the grouping double the energy generation her burst can infuse with elements help you create more reactions help stagger enemies help group enemies all of this is amazing and then she gives elemental mastery to the team she gives damage boost to the team at c6 she goes crazy and then spoiler alert catalysts are going far on this tier list because prototype amber is an extremely good weapon that works on so many different teams fav codex absolutely fantastic sacrificial fragments absolutely fantastic there are so many good thrilling tales of dragon slayers for the damage boost okay dude there's so many good catalysts that allow characters to unlock new builds unlock new play styles sucrose can use all of them on different teams to great effect she's amazing she's one of the best sport characters in the game you are gonna want to get her if you can unless you got like the dune cause well whatever sucrose is goaded she's an s plus you know what i didn't think we'd be dropping two s plus characters back to back but that's just how 1.0 rolls baby throwing fischl the princessin derver ertalung right up into s plus tier fischl's numbers are not fancy okay because she hits in small numbers for like the entire battle okay so she doesn't have that crazy navia burst skill all right maybe that hazo skill boom that you can get up to 100k bro but she's doing like 15 to 20k every second for the entire you know battle do the math bro she does so much damage well oz does so much damage sorry about that google oh my god i feel like everybody who's been playing genshin for a really long time and understands the game at a high level knows why Fischl's broken, but we've got new players, we've got casual players, and maybe you just haven't been indoctrinated into the church of Fischl yet. Let me break it down for you. Electro, great element right now. Fantastic, especially with Dendro, all that good stuff, great. She applies Electro. She has 100% uptime with Oz and her burst, switching between skill and burst. And then her ascension for passive. This is something you've probably heard thrown around. Fischl's A4 this, Fischl's A4 that. When an Electro reaction occurs, when Oz is out, it shoots a damage bolt that does a lot of damage, great, but it always applies Electro, meaning it 
always is going to do reactions, okay? So it's going to keep up the Electro Charge. It's going to keep up the Aggravate. It's going to do so much damage, dude. So a ton of damage, Electro, off-field all the time. She generates a lot of energy. There are characters that have these off-field abilities, but they don't always generate a lot of energy. Fischl's does. And then if that wasn't enough, dude, she stays winning. Golden Troop, new artifact set in Fontaine, takes her damage to huge levels man crazy high levels it, it, it's crazy i'm out of breath talking about Fischl because she's kind of just goaded next up is razor let's be completely honest razor in his physical dps or like electro dps ways he's bad he's very weak but there is one saving grace for razor in the landscape of genshin impact and the team is called thundering furry okay i didn't make it up let me break it down for you really in a simple way it's razor with bennett C6 on a Burgeon team. Now, why is this good? Because Razor's auto attacks can get infused with Pyro while also applying Electro at the same time while his burst is up. There is an amazing video by Zajef. If you wanna know more about this team in detail, I highly recommend that you watch that video. But pretty much, he gets Electro on the enemy so it's easier to create reactions. He burgeons before he hyperblooms, which is good because burgeon is AOE. He causes like vaporizes. He causes bur it's it's crazy. He drives all these reactions. But this is a team where Razor has to be C6 with a C6 Bennett on a specific burgeon only team, and he does really well. And you have to build him full out of the mastery. So his personal damage is pretty pretty weak. All those things considered, I don't think that's really fair to propel him into like a super high tier. But there is a team with Razor that is really fun, really cool, and does a lot of damage. Look it up if you're a Razor fan, because it really does make him shine. I'll put it right here, solid niche. Oh my God, is that the legend already? Is that Bennett coming in hot? If you guys don't know about Bennett yet, what you been doing? The crazy thing about Bennett is like, his, his description of what he does isn't even that long. He boosts the entire team's attack who's standing in a circle by a ton. So every character that scales with attack, loves the guy okay his heals are everybody in the, sh in the in the field if they're below 70 percent big heal ticks so he can heal the whole team he can buff the entire team's attack by a ton he applies pyro to your own character which can be useful in a lot of situations and he is a pyro battery for pyro characters that need it because his skill is on such a small cooldown all of these things put together they are just so unbelievably strong it's like attack buff that's all right healing that's all right it is a lot of healing and a lot of attack buff Every single one-shot comp, high DPS comp, team comps to like scale with attack and do a ton of damage, bro, they all have Bennett on it to this day. Every highlight reel you see has Bennett on it. And he's free, Paimon's Bargains. He's coming back in May, 2024. Go get him, because he's gonna be free. Okay, you get him for Star Glitter. Everyone should build him up. He's unbelievably versatile. Just use Bennett, he's insane. Go Bennett. Next up is a wonderful, beautiful character, Ning Guang. I don't have the highest opinion of Ning Guang. She is a short burst damage character. You come in, you throw the screen up, you drop her burst, you drop another screen, you drop a charge attack. That's about it, and then she's gone. She can do a lot of damage in a very short period of time, but after that, when her skills are down, normal attacking on here feels like trying to attack through the mud, trying to attack through some Laffy Taffy, all right? It doesn't feel great. She can do a lot of damage in that short period of time, but is it worth it? Not really, she's Geo. She needs a lot of like support to get that done. Lots of energy regeneration, lots of attack. And she needs some constellations to get her shards up and all this kind of stuff. I just don't think she's worth the trouble. Can you 36 star the Abyss with her? Absolutely, you can do it with every character in the game, but she doesn't reach those levels easily a good way to put it is that ningguang doesn't facilitate reactions because she's a geo character so she's just a raw damage geo character and she's probably like the weakest character in the game that's a geo character built to do raw damage so that just holds her back a lot too i put her into i8 characters i think there's a reason why most people don't play this character i'm sorry ningguang means beto is up next pirate mother oh how how cute that she comes right after ningguang unfortunately for ningguang beto is shooting up this goddamn tier list okay beto does an absolutely absurd amount of damage but the caveat about beto is you need 
to bring her into an abyss floor or a big fight where there are multiple targets. She is a very weak single target character because her burst works off of bouncing between enemies, okay? And when there's a bunch of enemies, it's just damage, 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 damage. It's awesome. She does so much. But against a single target, it has no one to bounce off to. It just fizzles out. But when she is against multiple targets, dude, so much damage is capable of being done by this hot mama. Quick thing to know about Beto, her C2 gives her a very large buff. Bouncing to multiple targets is great. Well, it already does, but to more targets, okay? And then her C6 is an Electro Shred, which boosts her damage even more. I think at C2, Beto is fantastic. And I think at C6, she's like amazing. But dude, even at C0, Beto can be strong. So just keep in mind the tier list is, you know, C6. So thought I'd mention those. She's good when she's good. She's weak when she's weak, but when she is good, she is very, very good. If you love Beto, she's totally worth building up. You're not gonna be able to use her all the time, but when you can, she's going to pop off. Very strong character. It's time for this little chef girl from Leeway to propel herself all the way into the, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> Let's try that again, chat. If you don't know the memes about Shangling doing too much damage, well, it's time to talk about her. Shangling is a pyro DPS character who does a ton of pyro damage off field with her pyro nato, okay? And just like Rosaria, it has no ICD, meaning every time that pyro nato comes around, it will vaporize, it will melt, it will burge in a seed. Okay, the biggest teams are vaporized, let's be honest. But dude, no ICD. And her damage numbers are just insane. So it's coming around, vaping, melting, whatever, every single time, doing a ton of damage. And it snapshots with Bennett's Burst. That pretty much means if you use Shangling's Burst at the last second of Bennett's Burst, the entire thing is going to get the attack boost, even when Bennett's Burst is done. Bennett, Shangling, godlike combo, one of the best combos in the entire game. She does so much damage. She works on lots of other different comps. The damage numbers are just insane. That's it, done. Reactions and damage numbers carry her. Her problems are getting energy recharge on her, but she's got the catch, the free to play weapon that still just goes absolutely insane on her, okay? It's almost like a five-star character and a five-star weapon, not a four-star character and a four-star weapon, okay? Shangling is one of the best characters in the entire game. Keep in mind, her C4 is an absolute game changer because it increases the duration of her pyronado by i believe four seconds let me double check yeah it goes up by 40 percent which is technically exactly four seconds any constellation that increases duration time is unbelievably good it's more damage more reactions you're able to generate and then a big one that people don't even think about you generate more energy particles to get up your burst absolutely goaded constellation is c4 but dude even without it she's a very very good character so to let it be known grab that c4 if you can she's amazing next up is our little ghostbuster chong yun i've had a bit of a change of heart with chong yun i used to think that he was just okay he does his damage he does his thing but i've came around to he actually does a lot of freaking damage this guy does big cryo burst damage with his burst the thing that's a little unfortunate about him is his skill while it does some damage that's cool it infuses the on-field characters autos if they're the right weapon type with cryo which just isn't exactly very useful like lots of teams actively don't want that infusion so that's a little bit unfortunate but dude there was a reason why he made his way onto those original national teams because they liked the melts, they liked the occasional freezes, and he did a lot of damage. And then his Constellation 2 is actually really cool, giving the team some like cooldown reduction, a very, very rare benefit to get in the game. I think he belongs into solid niche characters. I feel like people don't use him because there are better five stars. There's even better four stars, right? But if he's what you have, you can pump out a lot of damage with Tong Yun. He's a good character, man. Solid niche. Another banger up next, Xing Cho. He's as plus tier. Let's talk about it. I already said how Hydro is the best element in the entire game, in my opinion. Go watch my Elements video. Go listen to what I just said about Barbara. Hydro is insane. Facilitates the best reactions in the entire game. So this guy applies a ton of Hydro coordinated with your on-field character. It follows you wherever you are on the map and it does a lot of damage. Fire, all right? Now we've got the rain swords, okay? That give the main character on the field stagger resistance an amazing benefit to have, dude. That makes it so you don't get knocked around and you take less damage, insane. And then when the duration ends, you even get a little bit of a heal, bro. So you are applying the best element, doing a ton of damage, stagger resistance, a little bit of healing, and he generates a ton of hydro particles with his skill, especially with sacrificial sword, dude or fav. Oh my God, homie is generating so much energy. 
It cannot be understated just how good this character is. If you've ever heard about Yelon, you have Yelon. Xing Chou and Yelon are very similar characters. I'm not gonna explain their differences. I've already done that before, but one of the best characters in the entire game. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm putting Xing Chou right here. Xiong Ling is like a DPS character who's fantastic and works on a bunch of teams. Xing Chou is a support sub DPS character who works on even more teams. Maybe you don't like his short shorts, but you're gonna like how short your abyss runs are when you throw him on the team, build him up, he's insane. Next up is Diona, who I think is a bit of a misunderstood character in the landscape of Genshin Impact. Diona is a cryo support who generates shields. She heals the party. Well, that's pretty cool, okay? And then she gives a ton of elemental mastery at C6. So she is a character who is applying cryo, generating a lot of cryo particles when she's on her best bow, which is sacrificial bow. Okay, two skills, double the shield, up time, double the energy, share, gives elemental mastery to the on-field character, heals the team in the burst. That is a lot of stuff in one character. Are they the biggest shields in the game? No. Is it the biggest heal in the game? No. Is it the most energy recharge? It's a lot, but no. The thing is, is she's doing it all in one character. She is a jack of all trades support character. She's not flashy in the way that she does a ton of damage. And she's not a great elemental applicator for like melt teams or freeze teams. Like the uptime on her stuff isn't super high. So she's more of a support character with like a tiny bit of cryo, not really like this cryo applying support. But at the end of the day, dude, beginner player, advanced player, She's very, very useful. She's just outclassed by certain other characters when you can do enough damage and you don't need that support. But when you need that support, dude, she's fire. I respect Iona a lot as a support character and I think that you should too. Now everybody, yeehaw, it's time for Shin Yan. Woo wee. Now this is a great character. All right, I like Shin Yan a lot as a character. I think she's very cute, but I'm gonna keep it 1000 guys. She's going in breath here. Let me break down why she's bad. Split scaling, okay? You want to build her attack to do a lot of damage, but you want to build her defense to get your shields big, okay? So split scaling is dog. Every character that has split scaling is annoying because you can't be amazing at both. And then the big thing, her shield is bugged. Like still to this day, I believe it is like a server ping thing. When you click the shield and it does the little attack, it registers how many enemies are around you and then it gives you a bigger shield if you hit more. It doesn't read the enemies around you properly and you get the bad weak shield more often than not, okay? That sucks. And then when her shield breaks, the like off field, like pyro wave of damage that could be used on Burgeon or something, then you build her all amount of mastery and then she's even more split. It just goes away. Her kit is bad as a support. And then as a DPS, she can be used on mono pyro, okay? With like Bennett, Shangling, Kazuha, and her. But the fact of the matter is any pyro character does well in that slot because they're with three of the best characters in the entire game. That's her one team where she does all right. They just didn't give her anything unique and she literally doesn't even work sometimes. So unfortunately, I think this is where Shinyan belongs. Next up is one of those characters I like to call a free to play hero. It's Yan Fei. A lot of free to play players say she's their main DPS. She's their DPS hero that carried them until they got those characters, which I think is cool. More power to you. Yan Fei can be an on field DPS character trying to do melts, trying to do vapes. I'm gonna be honest, that is my least favorite build of Yan Fei. I think that the attacks are kind of slow. They're kind of clunky. It is fun to like balance the sigils and do the charge attacks. But at the end of the day, the effort it takes to the damage she deals is not a lot. Just keeping it 1000. But the build that has changed me, that I have become a changed man from. In my last tier list, I even said, I don't really like the Shield Fey uh, build on C4. I take that back. I have used it since then a lot more and it has carried me in so many runs c4 yan fei her constellation four it allows you to generate a big shield that in conjunction with prototype amber that weapon is insane it's so good she can activate pyro resonance for certain teams she can apply pyro with the burst with her skill all this put together she becomes an actually really cool supporting character i would put her dps build into i8 characters gonna be honest I would put her shield build alone, probably into very strong characters. It's just that support shield build is only gonna be used on certain teams. And if you really just want to use her, there are better characters. So I think with all of that said, I would probably put Yanfei right here into solid niche tier. She's fun and versatile. Let's go Yanfei. All right, our sleepy Denji Mushi, I think. 
Sayu, okay? We're talking about Sayu. Sayu was a character that when she came out, everyone just memed on her like, ooh, she rolls and that's about it. She's useless, ha ha. Okay, record scratch. Sayu is actually very useful. Her burst heals the whole party. That's great. And it applies animo so that you can swirl. Right then and there, Viridescent Venerer Shred is not to be underrated. Plus, she can heal the whole team, which is awesome. Now, her heal heals more at C6. So if you're trying to think of her on a Farina team, she really like goes up a lot in the tier list with C6 in that specific regard. She helps you do damage by Viridescent Venerer Shredding. Now, her damaging builds when you're trying to roll around with her and do damage, they can actually be pretty fun. You can run some cool like Aggravate Sayu. You can do the whole like, you know, Songling, Hydro stuff, try to do that. It's fine, it's fun, it's just not the best. But I think with her as a healing sport, I put her into solid tier for sure. She is a useful character that you can find uses for. Shout out to Sayu. All right, the pretty Tengu lady. Kujo Sara is a very unique character. I think at C0, she is a near unusable character. She's clunky, she's not fun, and getting her feather mechanic to work to get the attack boost that she gives is like not worth the trouble. Okay, at C2, it makes it easier to get the attack buff. And then even then, I still don't think she's very useful. <laughs> like it's still not worth the, the team spot. But then at Constellation 6, she grants a ton of crit damage for your Electro characters. Now, still to this day, She's kind of only being used on Raiden hyper carry teams, but she warrants her, you know, value on that team by making Raiden do a ton of damage. And then the thing about characters like this is the more strong Electro characters we get as Genshin comes out, because Genshin ain't dying anytime soon, Sara might just find her way onto that team and be able to pop off. So at Constellation 6, I would put Kujo Sara right here. Solid niche character. Next up is the Inazuman Weeb, gone abroad. The one guy absolutely carrying the entire Virgin team comp on his back. Toma could genuinely make an argument for the S plus tier because like I just said in that amazing, wonderfully funny and insightful introduction, this guy carries the Virgin reaction on his back. And Virgin is a really good team. You just need Toma or you can use like Dia, but she's just not as good as Toma. Dude, Virgin teams are awesome and Toma makes them awesome. But I do just wanna say, I am not a huge fan of Toma's pure support shielding build. A lot of people think of him as like a shielder. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really think of him as that because the Virgin build is so much better and the teams that you want him to shield on, he actually is more of like a liability than a benefit. And let me just explain that really fast. On the teams you want him, so something like Yoimiya Vape to get Pyro Resonance and a shield or Hu Tao Vape to get, same thing, Pyro Resonance and a shield. He can mess with the reactions of the team. That off-field pyro, like shooting from his burst, which is amazing on Virgin, it's kind of annoying on a lot of other teams because it doesn't do very much damage and it might steal that reaction, that vape, from your on-field character who wants it. So I, I gotta be honest, I'm not a huge fan of him and he needs a ton of energy recharge. So it's like you're building for no damage. You gotta get this energy recharge and this HP so your shield is good and then stealing reactions, I don't know. So Virgin, He's insane. He's an amazing freaking character, carrying it, carrying it. So S tier, very strong. I think that is super respectable for Toma. All right, dudes. I don't know how far we are into the tier list, but I'm gonna be honest. I think Barbara and even maybe Diona slipped their way into the very strong characters. We'll see if I change my mind, but I really do like these two characters. But next up is Dog Boy, it's Goro. Goro is a Geo support bow character. Reason I say that is cause he pretty much is glued to Favonius bow, which is good. Generating energy for the team, all that. He's a very low damage character, but he is the ultimate Arataki Ito support for the DPS, okay? And he does actually support Geo characters in general uh, with his Constellation 6 especially, but like not to a high degree. He's a great defense scaling boosting character and you know, defense Geo boosting character. Okay, so like Ito or Noel. And then for just Geos alone, he's all right. One thing to mention about Goro is Constellation 4 gives healing to the team, but like it's not even close to enough to use him as a healer on a Farina team if you were thinking about that. So like some Ito 
Goro Farina thing. He still doesn't cut it. You're going to need another healer. So keeping that all in mind, low damage only supports Geo defense characters to like his max potential. I don't know, man. That's really darn freaking niche. And I mean, I think that's where he's going to go. Unfortunately, he can't just be thrown onto other Geo teams. He can, but there's probably a better teammate that could be on there instead of him. And then I, I haven't mentioned Noel just because Noel, I honestly even think has better teammates than Goro. Like, I'd rather have Bennett, I'd rather have Shing Cho, I'd rather have Yelan, I'd rather have Farina, I'd rather have Zhongli. Like, there are certain characters I might rather have instead of Goro. So, he's going into niche. We're gonna fill up the I8 tier, I promise, chat. The early four stars of Genshin Impact were GOATs, and... No, oh, let's just go right into it. One of my favorite characters, she's going into I8 tier. She is a defense scaling normal attack buffing character she boosts normal attacks awesome how many characters actually really want that normal attack buff in Genshin impact there's honestly not that many you know something like yoimiya i'm sure you food yoimiya yunjin goes crazy but dude there's characters you'd rather have on that team than yoimiya if you're giving up bennett that's crazy if you're giving up a shield because she doesn't give a shield besides crystallize which is dog uh that's crazy because you know what I mean? I need it. And then if you're giving up like a vaporized reaction, you know, like Elon, she chose something like that. Also, once again, crazy. The buff she grants just isn't strong enough. It's cool. You can make it work. You can have some fun. Dude, if the numbers were up for the normal attacks, she would be awesome, but it just doesn't do enough. She doesn't even generate very much energy. She needs so much energy recharge. So her build takes a hit because of that. Yeah, uh, she's going in B, guys. Sad. Kuki Shinobu, a character that had such a rocky start in the Genshin. Everyone was like, this character's useless. She doesn't do anything. And now, look at her. Eeks, how did that happen? Sumeru happened. Dendro was released into the game. Electro was a bit weaker before Sumeru, but now Electro got stronger. Okay, well, you know, there's other Electro characters here that aren't up. Why is Kuki so high? The big reason is, guys, Hyper Bloom. It is one of the most brain dead easy to build, easy to make do a lot of damage reactions in the entire game. And there are not very many characters that can actually facilitate Hyper Bloom off field. It's Raiden Shogun, it's Lisa not very well, and you have to have C4, and then it is Kuki who is absolutely amazing at it. So she's rivaling Raiden Shogun as the best Hyper Bloom off field uh, driver, okay? Because you need to create a seed, and then you need to hit that seed with Electro. Kuki does that perfectly, and she heals the team all at the same time. With her Elemental Mastery, it increases her heal, so you got decent heals while doing a ton of damage. And then that alone is, is wild. Hyper Bloom is just that good, you gotta try it. But even without that, guys, Kuki does extremely well on aggravate teams or spread teams, whatever, because she can apply that element, once again, off field, while healing the team, maybe running Tenacity of the Millith to boost the on-field carries attack if they scale with attack. Yeah, dude, she's really versatile and, and does just so much in one character now that Electro is such a wanted, desired thing. And Hyper Bloom is just absolutely broken. So where do I put Kuki on this tier list? Up in the S plus tier. Kuki's goaded. Hyper Bloom's broken. Another free to play hero. A lot of players will sing their praises being like, my Hazo go crazy. My Hazo is insane. Here's the thing about Hazo. You can get that one punch to do like 100k damage, to do a ton of damage, that's awesome, dude. But I mean, dude, the cooldown was what, like 10 seconds, something like that? In the meantime, he's charge attacking and normal attacking, which is okay. It's okay. Animo DPSs in general are one of the weaker DPS team comps in Genshin. I go into this a lot on my five-star character tier list when I'm talking about Xiao and Water and all that stuff because they just don't have as many buffs that they can receive and they can't create these offensive reactions like melt okay like vaporize they don't have access to that they have swirl which scales with lmo mastery but then when you have a dps character like this you want to build attack so you have to choose between your swirl reactions or your attack reactions and you can't really have your cake and eat it too but if you build him full dps he can do some pretty good numbers genuinely but they're not numbers that rival the five stars or even the high characters in this tier they don't rival official okay 20k oz hits for like a million years he doesn't come close he doesn't come close to shangling fire nato okay that's just the fact of the matter even beto bro beto against multiple targets is destroying the damage numbers compared to hazel so with all of that said he's solid you can like carry with him you can get stuff done with him 
It's just... He's a four-star DPS, which is already a hard sell uh, if your name's not Shang Ling. Hey, so he's pretty all right. Kale is a character that I really enjoy. You guys heard me talk about in this tier list already that I've done a ton of four-star challenges. And dude, I've used Kale on so many of those challenges because Dendro is OP. Kale applies a lot of Dendro where you want it, when you want it, especially with things like Sacrificial Bow. I love that I can use her skill twice to apply even more Dendro. So she applies Dendro really well. And then her damage numbers, because you know, she scales with attack, are okay. That is about where it ends though. She's a Dendro applicator who's doing some damage and then trying to generate some energy. She doesn't really do anything to stick out. She's just good because Dendro is good. Being able to apply Dendro as good as she can really sneaks her into the, you know, solid tiers of the game. Shoutouts to Kale. Thank you for carrying me in so many Abyss runs. I appreciate you, Kale. Solid. One of the community's most memed on characters ever, Dory. Everyone thinks Dory is horrible, useless. I do not think Dory is useless. She is a character who applies Electro. We've been over Electro, a great element. She gives energy to the on-field character. That's very cool and heals. Okay, so she's a healer who applies Electro. Yeah, Kuki does that too. But Dory has this niche of generating energy for the on-field character. Now, is there a place where you would use Dory over the other Electro characters on a really, really, really competitive team? I generally think the answer is no. Her damage is really low and her energy that she generates for the team is also not a lot. So that does kind of hold her back. But those are useful things in the game that teams could want. Like if she's the only healer you have, or if you're running a Hyper Bloom team, you could throw her on Instructor, boost everyone's Elemental Mastery, and she might actually be able to contribute, okay? So I feel like she is a better character than Shinyan and Amber. Just to say it, at her Constellation 6, I mean, she gets uh, Electro Infusion on her attacks and she heals the team even more. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if she heals enough to be viable on a Farina team, but I mean, you can run her as a DPS and she's not actually that bad. You can make her work. She's not completely useless, but she's not fantastic either. Dory's and B. Up next is an absolute heartbreaker. How do they make a character this fine? Who's this? bad <laughs> i want to make this character work and i want her to be good but she's just straight up not what she does is gives the on-field character hydro infusion and then at higher constellations she does a lot she does not a lot but she tries to do a lot of off-field hydro damage that is it okay she's not healing the team she's not giving shields to the team She's not buffing the team. She's just giving the on-field character Hydro Infusion. And the sad thing is, nobody wants that. You can take Candace and make like a really bad Hyper Bloom team with her. And then Hyper Bloom by, you know, just being Hyper Bloom is pretty decent. But like, that doesn't make her a good character. It's like you're running her on the team just because you really want to use her. You would never, ever want to use this character unless you're just forcing yourself to use her because you really like her. It sucks, it's sad, I hate all of those things that I just said, but it's literally true. She's very, 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 very weak. And I genuinely think she's in like bro characters. I feel like there's no reason to use this character unless you're doing a four star challenge like I do and I gotta cheese it with Hyper Bloom and it's frustrating to play with her because she's just not good. So I'm sorry, Candace. Please forgive me. Next up chat is Laylers. And here's the thing, my chat has a lot of big Layla fans in it. So I'm not gonna be nice to them, okay? I'm not gonna be biased. I'm gonna tell it like it is. <sighs> she is a cryo shielding character. That's about it. She is a shield bot character. Now, the thing that I really don't like about Layla is to make her shields the biggest they can be, you've got to run a bunch of HP on her. Then you need to get energy recharge and all this stuff so you can keep her burst up to apply the cryo, whatever, get the little procs going. And then yeah, most characters that provide a shield in this game do so much more than just give a big shield. That's just not enough to be an amazing character. If you want to build Layla to do damage, you have to make her shield weaker because, okay, some of it scales with HP, not all of her damage. So there's already a little bit of split scaling in there. So even if we act like all her damage scales with HP, now you need to build things like cryo damage and crit so that the damage is actually, you know, noticeable. But now you are just taking away from her shields. So you're making one build better to make one build worse. And her cryo DPS isn't very high. So is it even worth it to do that? No. And then is it worth it to just have a cryo shield bot that's not really doing anything else? 
No, it's really not. I hate that she has that split scaling thing. And with that, she goes to the top of I. I wish she was better because she's such a cool character. She's so pretty. But like, I, I genuinely find myself unable to find a situation where I want to use this character because she just doesn't do enough. I'm sorry, Layla. It's time for Madam Faruzan. I love Faruzan as a character, but I'm sorry to say she is one of the characters of the new four star variety where Hoyaverse makes them very not good at low constellation and extremely good at high constellations. Faruzan at C6 versus Faruzan at even C5 is a very big difference. For C6, grants like even more animo damage buffs to the DPS characters. So that means like characters like Xiao, characters like Wanderer, now really want her on the team. And before that, before she gets the C6 that goes crazy, she doesn't do enough to warrant her spot on the team. There are better characters to use in that slot on those teams, okay, like Xiao. How about a shield character, Zhongli, Bennett for the attack boost, okay? A like Jean for big heals and can also generate some energy, okay? Farzan also has massive, massive energy problems, okay? She needs so much energy recharge, it's in absurd to even use her below C6. And then the buff, once again, it's not enough. So low con Farzan, not good. I literally would put into bra characters. I think she is very bad. When you get her, to the C6, she becomes the premier, ultimate, super invaluable Animo DPS support. And so with all that said, she is going into the solid niche characters. And I think that like on those teams, she's better than Kujosara. Like Raiden can work without Kujosara. Xiao and Wanderer, like if you are not using C6 Farazan on the team, you're like kind of actively trolling. She's super freaking good. Like very, 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 very good, but only for those Animo DPS characters at Constellation 6. Maybe I'll get one one day. I think my Farzan is at C1. Farzan solid. Let's go. All right, she's hidden off the tier list. You can see her in the bottom corner, but we are talking about Yao Yao. If you've been around the stream, which you should come follow, I have said this time and time again. I believe Yao Yao is a five star in disguise. Dendro, amazing, broken. If you're playing her well, you can have 100% uptime on Dendro application. When she's using her burst, she has to be the one on the field, okay? That's the only kind of caveat. Maybe there's some characters that want to be on the field at that time, but if you got to get the Dendro, you got to switch in on Burst on her, okay? But her Burst heals the team so freaking much, dude. And then her skill heals the team. So in this climate with Farina, with annoying Abyss Floors, healing is that much more important. So huge heals and Dendro application. Just that alone, makes her really good. I said how good Call Lei is with just a lot of Dendro application. Now, Yao's Dendro app is a little bit more finicky. You gotta kind of throw your Uegues in the right place so that she attacks properly, whatever, whatnot. But dude, I think when Yao Yao is playing well, popping off on the perfect team, she is unbelievably amazing. One thing about Yao Yao is dude, her constellations like don't matter really. Like they're cool. But like, bro, I've been rocking C0 Yao Yao and she still pops off, still feels extremely useful. The things that kind of hold her back are Uegue being a little bit annoying. She needs a lot of energy recharge and she doesn't do a lot of damage. Yao Yao is absolutely amazing. She doesn't quite make her way into the S plus with the characters I'm staring at. So big respect to Yao Yao for being on the cusp. Move over Bennett, cause Mika's coming through baby. All right, now Mika guys is better than you think. At Constellation six, he becomes this pretty like monstrous physical damage buffing character. All right, which is great for Eula. And that's about it because Physical is a forgotten team comp by Hoyaverse. Okay, so that's really cool. But dude, ignoring the C6, he grants a big heal to the team. That alone is cool. Like that is useful, especially with Farina. I gotta be honest, he shot up a bit because of that. Big heal. Now, the other thing he does is a little bit of attack speed buffs. So you've got heals, you've got attack speed buffs, and then you've got the final thing, which is this physical damage thing. So on the physical damage teams, he's cool. And then on teams where you're running with Farina and you wanna like get that big heal, that's nice. Okay, that is cool. So Mika has found his way into the solid niche characters. He's solid. Big heals are very nice to have. Next up is my favorite, Sumeru Academia 
class person? Student? Student. I've been out of the student game for a while. Kaveh man, he is really not good. He is a character based around the Bloom reaction. And I'm not talking Hyper Bloom. I'm not talking Burgeon. He can't do that, okay? It's just Bloom, which you don't, bl Bloom is not a thing. You want Nilu Bloom, okay? And the Nilu Blooms blow up like immediately. And Kaveh's whole thing is he makes the Blooms blow up faster. Nilu Blooms blow up really fast anyway. So dude, what is this character doing? Okay, he gets a Dendro infusion on his normals. Okay, that's kind of cool, but the good Nilu teams have enough Dendro application. His other thing is he like heals and doesn't take a whole lot of damage as a you know result of that from Blooms. So that's it. But like a good Nilu team has the heals and doesn't really care about that. I mean, he's bruh. There's no reason to use the character. That's so sad, but there really isn't. I'm sorry, Kame. I really like you, my dude. But they did you dirty, man. You're late for class. <laughs> the character that made me eat cat food for the first time in my entire life, Kidada. Kidada is Dendro, which we've been over. Dendro is OP, all right? But Kidada does not apply Dendro very well, like characters like Kale. Yao Yao applies Dendro better and then doesn't even come close to the five stars, okay? So what does she do to make up for that? She's got shields, okay? She's one of the few Dendro characters that can generate shield, which is awesome. So that is very useful. And then her burst, it has a really high damage multiplier, which is great, but you have to build her attack and then your shields do less. So it's like, you could do this like kind of meme -y DPS Kirana build, which I still want to try because I love Kirana, but uh, <laughs> we'll get there. And, or you build her shield and then she just doesn't apply that much Dendro because doing the on-field cat thing is just not really super useful on a lot of teams. You're lowering your DPS by choosing to do that because you're not on field with a higher damage character or you're not normal attacking to proc things like Xing Cho and other normal attack based things. Her C6 even gives elemental damage bonus to the team, which is really nice. All of that being said, she's definitely a solid niche character. She kicks Hazo down a little bit. Yep, well. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up is Lynette. She's a big fan favorite. She's cute. Who doesn't like a good cat girl every now and again? Maybe I don't because Lynette is not very good. Yeah. Okay, she's animal. Cool, great. Beard as inventor is shredding. That's awesome. We've been over that. We love that. Does she, you know, heal or anything else that's really useful? No. Does she generate a lot of energy? No. Okay, so the the the, the one thing she does, dude, that sets her apart, she doesn't do see a hit. So like against certain bosses that like the robots that you need that. That's cool, but like, that's not worth, that doesn't make a character good. And then C6, okay? That's the outlier here. It turns her normals into Animo Infusion, so she can now attempt to be an Animo DPS carry. Well, you guys have heard me go over the Animo DPS stuff. It's not really fantastic. And I mean, Hazo is better at that. I really don't think Lynette is very good. I think you use Lynette if you're a fan of her. You can make her work, shred that resistance, but after that, she's not really doing much. Lynette, I'm sorry, homie. The sweet, wholesome, Fontanian diver, Fremene. This guy also, just like his sister, got the short end of the stick from Hoiverse. Four star DPS characters. They're just not very good. And I'm gonna be honest, it makes sense that Hoiverse does that because they wanna sell the five star DPS. Think about Shangling, she's not like just a DPS. Yes, she does a ton of damage, but it's the reactions that she does. They're super useful. They can vaporize, all this kind of stuff. And then same with Fischl. Lots of damage, lots of reactions too. Fremene, bro, he's a physical damage. We've already been over, physical sucks. Four star carry with a very small amount of cryo damage. He wants to shatter things, which is just a very bad reaction that scales with elemental mastery. And then you're a Claymore character. So yeah, you shatter, which means they're not frozen and being frozen is cool. Bro, the damage numbers just don't add up. I'd probably put him right here. You can clear, right? If you get him with a crazy freaking team, amazing weapon, well-built, 
He's gonna do damage. It's just physical isn't great. The cryo thing is weird. The shatter thing is weird. He's a four-star DPS. He's struggling. He's trying his best. So shout out to the Fremenay mains out there making it work. But end of the day, he's not that good. We have made it to the final character on the list, Charlotte. She is a cryo healer who scales with, this is why I like Charlotte a lot, attack, bro. She, she does damage while healing the team. Is her damage super high? No, but with her constellations, she gets even more bonus attack. She gets another follow-up attack with her C6. This is cool stuff. And this adds to the damage she's doing on the field while also healing the team. At C1, her heals are even more, which makes her so good on Farina teams. Let me put it this way. Diona is the jack of all trades support. Charlotte heals way more than Diona, okay? Then you look at Layla. Layla big shields right but very 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 little damage but charlotte does some damage while also doing a lot of heals and just straight up heals are more useful than shields that's just straight up in the climate of genshin impact right now and one other thing dude she's a catalyst once again prototype amber favonius codec thrilling tales of dragon slayers all these really good support catalysts just make a character even better. So I think this is fair, right next to Barbara. I think Charlotte is more fun and interesting to play than Barbara. Barbara with the self hydro is annoying, but we already went over why hydro is so good. Charlotte is great. Her heals are awesome, especially if you have that C1. Her and Farina are a fantastic combo. She's great on Ayaka Freeze. She's great on so many teams. Shout outs to Charlotte, our newest four star in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, after looking at the list, I am very, very happy with how the four-star tier list turned out. The solid niche tier is filled with lots of characters that are very strong or just really, really strong in only a few situations. Very strong has some of the best overall support characters in the whole game and even some really high DPS characters like Rosaria, Beto, and Noel. S plus is the GOATS. Dude, I am very, very, very happy with this list. Homies, if you guys learned a little bit of something from this tier list, how about you thank me by subscribing to the channel, okay? I'm on the road to 50K subs right now. It would be an absolute dream if we could hit that number. So support your boy. I'm dropping Genshin Impact videos all the time that we put a ton of effort into. So please, as always guys, shout outs to the live viewers over here on Twitch. Guys, I stream on Twitch all the time playing Genshin, every event, every abyss, every pull night. It's always a fun time and I'd love it if you guys became a part of our community. Big shout outs to the patrons we've got over on Patreon who help us create content full time. We've got Zik, we've got Meow, we've got Cloudy, Caldo, Gophers, Poison Tongue Boy. Thank you guys oh so very much. And dudes, hey, I hope you have a fantastic 2024. I hope you win every single 50-50, and I hope your favorite character comes out soon. Our Lakino waiters, where are you at? All right, homies. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for the support, lady. I really do appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace.